Time now for our rants and raves of the week. And let's start with you, Dan. Okay, well, I have a rant uh, ab about an institution that probably isn't too popular with many people, and that is the government of Iran, uh, which for over six months now has been uh, holding prisoner a Washington Post reporter, Jason Rezaian, uh, on very hazy charges. Mm -hmm. all, that, um, all that the Iranian government has said is that the charges don't have anything to do with his journalism. Uh, they also arrested his wife, mm. who's also a journalist, although she was released on parole. He remains behind bars. He has not been allowed to see mm -hmm. a lawyer. And just recently, it was, um, it was uh, announced that a very hardline judge would try his case. Mm. Uh, the Post has been trying the best they can yeah. to get the word out. Editor Marty Barron tweets about this mm. quite a bit. Uh, but this has not gotten the attention yeah. it deserves. It's starting to. You're right. And it is starting yeah. to, yes. Marjorie. Well, um, not, I hate to be Debbie Downer here because nobody <laughs> wants to talk about death and dying, but Ellen Goodman, former Globe columnist, yeah. is doing this thing called the Conversation Project, and yeah. she had a great line when I spoke to her about this, that just like in the 70s, women rewrote childbirth, she's saying that the baby boomers are rewriting how you die. And as part of this trend, which I think she's right about, Atul Gawande, surgeon at the Brigham, uh, did this great frontline uh, piece. Mm. It was uh, a few days ago, but you can still get it, uh, talking about how doctors themselves are lousy dealing with the issues of death and dying, so don't look to them to help you. And in one very honest scene, he was talking about taking care of this young woman who was terminally ill with cancer, and he makes a confession to her husband, and we have the piece right here. And I remember saying something I sort of regret, which was, you know, maybe that experimental therapy will work for the thyroid cancer too. The reason I regret it is because I knew it was a complete lie. Hmm. The piece talks about doctors trying yeah. to sugarcoat things with their patients, how difficult it is for doctors to have these conversations, but it also is a, it's depressing, believe me, but it's a really yeah. important look at this decisions you should make for your parents mm. or yourself, or you should so talk about So that was a rave for Frontline? That was a, yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> okay. I didn't say it was a rant or a rave, it yeah, was no, a rave for Frontline. All right, Dante. Uh, mine is a rant, but really more of a lament. Recently, in the final round of judging for the World Press Photo Contest, the judges had to disqualify 20% of the entries that remained at that point on the grounds of excessive digital manipulation. Oh. Um, in some cases, these are professional photojournalists. In some cases, they had digitally lightened or darkened or recolored the photos in such a way that uh, upon looking at the original files, the judges concluded that uh, essentially the image of the, the original essence yeah of the image had been changed, and that's a big no-no. Yeah. Um, the problem in this area is that the standards in the industry are in flux. In traditional newspaper newspapering, I learned, the standard is that you will typically retouch a photo enough so that it reproduces properly on your presses. In digital, it's a different universe the range of tools that are available to, uh, to photographers who want to juice up their photos to make them stand out have raced ahead of the consensus yeah. within the industry I about agree. what's proper it's to do. Time to move on to problem. the new age. All right, Adam. I got a quick rant for ESPN, also known as the worldwide leader in sports, which recently accused a low-level Patriots employee, uh, a guy named Jim McNally, who I believe lives in New Hampshire, of trying to slip uh, an, uh, you know, unofficial mm -hmm. uh, non-kosher football onto the field during that AFC championship game that gave us Deflategate. The next day, I believe, uh, ESPN published a different account which said the football had come from an NFL official. So they essentially Ooh. corrected their own story but left the original story up. Uh, it is not corrected. It is not retracted. Oh, I heard the retraction. And this guy, who just happens to be, again, a low-level Patriots mm -hmm. employee, kind of had his name dragged through the mud. Oh, yeah. oh that, that's terrible. Bad All stuff. Right. All right, I have a rave <laughs> for Fox News, Fox 25, who, you know, you, you got to come up with clever ways to cover the, 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 the storms, the snow still on the street. It's tedium. But as we all know, my neighborhood included, there are a lot of areas that just aren't plowed out. And people are desperate. They know where to put the snow. So Fox News is going around with this little bobcat and answering people's pleas for help. And they go over to these houses <laughs> and they move this. Snow. Look at this. And people are so grateful. They couldn't get out. You know, they couldn't. They didn't know what they were going to do with the snow. And was that Maria Stefanik?
Stefanos you know, hugging I, a woman? I don't think it was. Okay, so do they drive to the, the yeah, news on-air yeah. personalities yeah. drive the Bobcat? Yeah, they go on the Bobcat. Oh, that's, that's great. great. <laughs> that's great. Anyway, I love it. Can you come to my house? All right. That's our show. Tell us what you think. Do you think Bill O'Reilly exaggerated his war tales? Does the media put too much emphasis on a candidate's so-called formative years? Weigh in on our website, beatthepress.org. You can also catch up on past episodes or watch any of this show you may have missed.